everyone, authors, writers, readers. I am so excited to be introducing author James Market, and he has a brand new book called All Things Bright and Strange. And um, as you can see on the cover of this video, the cover of this book is crazy, isn't it? Just love the color. I hope it shows up as well as I've seen the pictures of it. I don't have one of it because I um, was reading it on Kindle. He's going to be sending me one and um, I will show it off as soon as I get it. But anyway, guys, here is James. <laughs> Hi everyone, I am so excited to be speaking with author James Marker, and we're going to be talking about his brand new book called All Things Bright and Strange, and it just came out at the end of January, and I've been seeing this book all over the place, James, so I'm so excited to be talking to you today. Well, I'm excited to talk about it. <laughs> Writing is a lonely thing, so whenever we get to talk about our books, it's good. Yeah, and I'm I'm telling you, I was seeing like everybody that you know on Instagram, especially like I, I belong to a lot of um, blog book bloggers. You know, like I uh -huh. follow a lot of book bloggers and book clubs, and you know everybody was just showing this off. And really, I have to say that it's your cover that is absolutely stunning. Isn't it cool? Oh my god! And it's a and it's a photogenic cover that I call it. <laughs> It's it's not oh. only a cool cover, but for some reason in pictures it pops even more. It really does because that's what was drawing my eye to it. I know everybody's been saying that about it, you know. Okay. And so people who say you know that a cover doesn't matter, I mean it matters because it stands out. Amongst, oh, it absolutely does. Yeah. You know, it really stands out, and I know that publishers you know pay a lot of attention to that, and I have to give them big kudos on this because this one really stands out. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, you get to see a little bit of what the story is about, but I mean, it's like, right. you know, like you said, it, on the pictures, the pictures I've been seeing of it, I mean, that color blue is just like teal. I mean, it's just with, yeah. the, with the cardinal, uh, it's just crazy. Well, it's, so It's a little creepy and vintage and yeah. I mean, it's a lot, a lot of different things. It's a lot of different things, yeah. And I couldn't wait to find out um, before I started reading it. I mean, just looking at the cover, I was like, what church? What are they? You know, it's about a church. Okay, I can't wait to see what this is about. And, mm -hmm. you know, it takes a little bit of going in to, to you find out. But, I mean, I loved it. So I just wanted well, to start you. off with that. <laughs> but anyway, for everyone, you know, who wants to hear a little bit about this, I mean, it's set in 1920. It's after World War One, and it's about a World War One vet. And it's also set in South Carolina in a fictional town called Bell Haven. And I wanted to know, like, what made you pick that time period? Um, well, my, my first couple of books had been historical, so I pretty much I needed to write another historical novel. Um, and I enjoyed with the angel share the book before it writing about you know, a little bit about world war one and um and prohibition and I, I wanted to kind of touch upon that again um and another thing you know just you know reading different things about the time period and it touched on the clan and how how you know big they were during that time period mm. um so that's where i kind of thought you know 1920 um and the whole kind of theme of tolerance came about, and that that's what kind of spurred everything. And I think it was the Boone Hall Plantation. It was a couple of years ago. My wife and I went to South Carolina, and we visited that. And I was walking down to their Avenue of Oaks, mm -hmm. um, and I saw some of the old plantation houses alongside it and thought, you know, this is kind of what I want to steal this image and run with it. Yeah, well, my son used to live in Charleston, so I spent a little bit of time down there. And, okay. um, you know, I, I, it's beautiful. I mean, South Carolina is, is yeah, just a beautiful it. state. But I love the story. I want you to tell everybody the story that you put in the end of the book about how you came up with the idea for this book, because it is such a cool story. Uh, about the birds? Yes. Okay. Um, well, you know, I had... I think snippets of a new story that I wanted to do, but not really exactly what. And I was driving to work one day and um, kind of a curvy road alongside this little pond. And I looked up in one of the trees and it was just 
full. It, it was the winter, so there were no leaves, but it was full of uh, cardinal birds. So you had this big burst of red, and you know, about 30 yards away, there was another tree that was full of big, huge black vultures. <laughs> and wow. I, I almost drove off the road because you know seeing one seeing one was you know pretty amazing, and then seeing the other. Um, so then I, I went home and, and you know kind of looked up what you know cardinal birds and what they represent, and then I, I just kind of ran with it from there. Um, you know, some people think that you know seeing a cardinal bird represents you know a loved one who's passed, and um, then I thought Ooh. you know instantly went to the vultures and thought of evil, um, right, and dark, you know, and that, you know that that kind of duality there is you know kind of what made the story go yeah and to think you know i was i was trying to recall if i've ever seen a vulture like when i read that story i was like have right. i ever seen a vulture i'm in pennsylvania and okay. i'm not sure that I, I i don't know but i'm thinking that would have been a very interesting <laughs> well they, you know, they, like, they look huge they look like, like animals with wings on them <laughs> right but it right. was fun i mean because they were so large and of course the cardinal birds aren't that big and it was just the contrast between the two was pretty amazing yeah and exactly like the, even the color wise you know like you mm-hmm. can see the black and the red and right I, I just i loved the concept of this story and i because and i don't want to say too much because i want people to read it and i, I don't give any spoilers away so i try to talk okay. around you know the parts that i love the most to just to make sure that it doesn't give anything away but mm-hmm. the church is I was thinking, like, if there was such a thing, right, and mm-hmm. you could, you know, I was trying to putting myself into um, Ellsworth's shoes. So, you know, his wife passes away, and at first he's kind of scared of the church, and this church is known to, um, that people can go and hear from their loved ones who have passed. Mm-hmm. I think that's saying good enough, right? <laughs> right. I don't want to say too much. But I was thinking, so say there was this thing. Both my parents, my mom just passed away recently, within the last mm-hmm. five years. And, and I was like, you know, because he said, I'm just going to go once. I'm just right. going to go once. Okay? And I would do that. I would be like, oh, absolutely, I am going to go and see what she has to say. You know, mm-hmm. especially because my dad passed away a long time ago, so I would be looking for my mom, per se. But then, right. you know, the next day would come and you'd be like, okay, what? wait, maybe there's something else. That he's mm-hmm. to say. You know, and, and how he kept getting drawn back and back. And, like, I just know that's exactly what I would have done, you know, because mm-hmm. there's no way you can go once. Right. And, you know, there's no way you can. And what a concept. And that's what I wanted to kind of portray with the town. Um, you know, I, I wanted it to be kind of an allegory of, like, a drug addiction and you know that yes. type of thing yes and it, and it's weird because it is because i mean think about the one thing that anybody who's lost anyone always says you know just one more i just want to hear one more thing or mm-hmm. one thing you know that they want to say you know just right. one more conversation but then and you then have that conversation right and then here's a situation where they can right but at what cost but at what cost but they don't even know Right. Really. I mean, but then I think, and and you can correct that, you know, like, I want to give spoilers. So I'm like really struggling here. It's like, you know, and then you start thinking of the cost and it's like, okay, so at what cost would you, you know, like then you'd be like, okay, so what is the cost? Right. And which one are you willing, you know, what are you willing? But they just don't know. But, you know, it's so anyway, that's, that's the concept, everyone. And you know, <laughs> it, it, it goes from there and it's crazy. And, and just so everyone knows, there's a little bit, I, I love, okay, there's a little bit of a story in the, in the beginning, in the very beginning, and you don't understand where it's going to lead to. But then right. the first line of the book is, it was as good a day to die as any. And I was like, wow, oh, what a great line. Like, because then you're setting the tone, you know where he's at. You know mm-hmm. where Ellsworth's mind is at. Like, right. it doesn't matter. He didn't care. He didn't care. He could be here. He could not be here. And it didn't matter because that's, you know, that's where his life was at. But um, anyway, so I read the book and then I went back 
and I reread that story in the beginning, which I just got. Mm-hmm. I, I've been doing that a lot lately. I have been telling my authors, I can't believe like I never thought of that before, but I constantly now go back to the beginning because right. then I'm like, oh my god, how brilliant is this? <laughs> just to well, see the setup, you know? Because some, sometimes it, writers can do some things that seem brilliant. That happened on ac- on accident. Um, other times it's on purpose. Um, this was one of those cases, you know. I certainly won't give away the ending, but right. I, I had that in mind. Um, you know, I had the beginning and and the end in mind when I started. So you you did like you did you write that little short story before you wrote like you knew that was going to come in in the beginning like that's how it was yeah. going to start. Yeah. Okay. And even and, even that first line, it says it was as good as good a day to die as any. But then the next line is what? But first he would have his morning cup of joe. Right. Um, and and I wanted to have those two lines to you know one was a, to set one tone, and then the other to get you know to let it know that there is a little bit of humor in this book. <laughs> yes. There's some dark. Well, there's a lot of humor in him too, you know, right. as a character. Mm. Kind of very dry, dry type of humor, and I and I like to try to do a lot of humor in in the dialogue because, you know, I think people say funny things, and um, and I think that helps build character. Yeah, well, and I loved him. I mean, I became so attached to his character because, you know, just with his struggle. Um, and I'm just hesitating to say the next thing I'm not going to say, but it just says you get to live his struggle. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, the fact that he didn't do it. And of course, I, I love the fact that, you know, he doesn't, of course he doesn't. And then, right. you know, the reason is because his neighbor comes over with some food and then he's like, okay, well, you know, I hesitated and now I got to eat breakfast. <laughs> right. And I, and I, I actually laughed when I, the chapter, you know, when he says, oh, she fried bacon. <laughs> At the end of it, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it just lets you know exactly uh, where he is, you know. So that and I, I would be like, so that too, you know. It's like, oh, the world is horrible. Oh, I hope I get some bacon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, and you know, and you get the. What I love is the love story between him and um, his wife, and she, you know, she's passed away. At the beginning mm-hmm. of this book, we know that. and um, But I love the love story that you, you know, you made me love them as a couple. It mm-hmm. was so endearing, you know, his love for her. I don't know. There's something about reading about a man and his love for, and we're just talking on Valentine's Day, by the way. So right. <laughs> there's something about, you know, from a man's perspective about his love for his wife. I just mm-hmm. love that. You know, as a woman, I love reading about that. And I'm sure your other women readers have told you that, too. So, and it was know. a challenge because... You know, she's never alive during the book. Right. Um, so a lot of that has to be done with, you know, dialogue and thoughts and a little bit of backstory. But right, right. So it is a little bit of a challenge. But I mean, just the the thoughts that he has of her and his reminiscing of her, and even still feeling guilty if he thinks somebody is attractive. You know, he goes mm-hmm. through that, and then right. the kind of guilt that he feels about it. It just makes him that much more endearing. I thought, you know, and then of course, you know, his journey is just. Crazy, crazy good. Well, thank you. <laughs> but I see here, I wanted to see that you have another book coming out in June. Is that true? It's true. It's true. Uh, okay. Yeah. I kept June, re-looking, June at the day, re-looking it up. Okay. So, because I was like, two in one year. How did you do that? Well, um, I write pretty quickly, but um, it was a situation where. It was supposed to come out, I think, around eight, nine months after All Things Bright and Strange. Um, but they asked if I could deliver it early because they had a spot open up in June. And at that point, I'd only written three uh, chapters. Um, but that book, I tell you, the one in June, you know how authors will say that, you know, it practically wrote itself. Um, that's one book that I've written that I honestly – it went very quickly. I think I wrote it in three months. Um, wow. With very little pause as far as, you know, where is this going? Because I think that's, I knew where it was going right from the start. Um, so that's not kind of typical. I'm not going to have to book it out every four months. 
But uh, right, right. This one, they just moved this one earlier, and then I'm work, I'm finishing up one now that'll be out March of 2019. Yeah, because usually, you know, authors, it's like one one book a year is a lot. So you mm-hmm. go through the writing and the editing and, you know, everything that you have to go through. And that's why I was like, wait a second, this came out, you know, five months later. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you're not somebody that's writing like a series books or, you know, like these are, yeah. these are the in-depth books, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This that's is why like... I don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Your I try, but I, I try, but I can't. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. Well, I can't wait. I, I I can't wait for it to come out. I I will. Uh, we can talk about it because you know I love your book. It was you know I want to go back and read. You had um, in 2014 you had a white wind blue and then angel share in 17. Mm-hmm. I want to read that one. I mean, yeah. You know, I I love your writing. Well, thank you. <laughs> I can't say enough about it. And um, so yeah, I will be looking forward to that book in June that's coming out. But, yeah, well, um, I'll see if I can get you an uh, early copy. Oh, that would be awesome. So um, I had a question because I have been to Louisville, Kentucky, and I think okay. I say it wrong. Me, you know, my son and I, we went there for um, to go to the baseball. But I don't know. What oh, yeah. The right? Slugger baseball. Museum. The Slugger, yeah, the Slugger. And he, yeah. he got a bat and, you know, we were on our way somewhere else, but we stopped there. And then everybody was saying, we say, Louis, you know, I'm in Pennsylvania, we say Louisville. Is it Louisville right. or Louisville? Well, I, I say Louisville. Oh, um, you do? Okay. I do. Sometimes I'll say Louisville. Uh, you know, I'm 43 years old. I've lived here my entire life, and I'll wow. probably say it three different ways. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, okay I think I most feel better. most most Louisvillians probably have one way to say it. I think it's Louisville, um, but you know, I guess it depends on how quickly or how slowly I say it. It sounds different, uh, but it is one of those words that um, there's probably six or seven different ways to say it. Okay. So we to to make it easier, a lot of us here to say the bill. Oh, there you go. If you want to sound like you're coming there, you just say the bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it, it helps matters out. <laughs> I think you're. I think you're right though, because of the accent, it just comes out quicker. Like the Louisville, it's like quicker. Like mm-hmm. you know, than how well, how well. I'm speaking. Yeah, like Louisville, it's just a yeah. quicker way of saying it. But other than writing, I saw you're also a tennis pro, and yes. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> so. Yes, I don't. Um, I don't teach as much as I used to, but it, I'm still, you know, given about ten hours of lessons a week. Um, but I've been doing that for about 23, 24 years, you know, mostly wow. just like turn, tournament level high school players, that type of thing. Um, Did you play like at any kind of level when you were in school? At, well, you know, in, you know, in high in high school, I played all the tournaments and then in then college, I decided I didn't want to play anymore and I just started teaching. So I think I was 19, 18 when I started teaching tennis mm-hmm. so I, I taught tennis through college and ended up you know being a USPTA pro for a couple decades and now I'm slowly transitioning to writing full-time right Final. well it's one way to stay in shape <laughs> yes that's the thing so I, I've already decided once I stop teaching that uh-huh. I'm, gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to work out for the first time <laughs> right <laughs> see what that's like <laughs> Well, I mean, it's pretty. I, I always love, you know. I have a, I have six children, and all of them have played sports in some fashion. And and right now, my son, who's 18, is trying to get a golf scholarship into, you know, working on that. So I'm, right. always, I'm always interested in the, you know, because he goes for, you know, lessons. He drives like to Jersey for lessons, and mm-hmm. you know, it's like it's amazing as parents <laughs> what we will do for our children that are interested in sports. You know, That's like, right. because it's, you got to go to another level. I mean, because everybody's, it's so competitive. Every mm-hmm. sport is so competitive right now. I know. You know? My son plays travel volleyball, and he's, oh, we're, we're going heck. to Chicago, to Phoenix, so we're going everywhere. You know, this area <laughs> is huge in volleyball. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, like where I am right now, it's it's becoming a very, you know, all of a sudden it like came out of nowhere that it's like, Huge. Well, Penn State has a great volleyball team, and oh yeah, you know, so I know exactly what you're talking about because I love I, watching you know. it. And oh. I was actually glad that he chose to start playing volleyball instead of tennis because 
I didn't know if I could take it. Right. I know. I have four four of my children are boys, and they mm-hmm. all kind of pick different sports. And I think oh, wow. they wouldn't compete against each other. You know, right. they kind of each have their own thing that they, you know, they pursue. So, you know, that's why when I saw that, I was like, that's interesting. I know, I know exactly, you know, like what that world looks like. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, but I just want to tell everybody, go buy this book. Okay, you'll love the cover. So, you know, just for the cover alone, just pick yeah, it up. Yeah, it's got a great. <laughs> take it's a picture. A great, of the store. <laughs> yes, they will see. Everybody will be seeing it as they hear, listen to us talk. They will be seeing the cover, so they'll know. Okay. And um, but I, you know, to have in your library, like, you know, what I've been seeing people on Instagram doing, which I never thought of, is like, I don't know if you've seen this, but people will arrange their bookcases and make artwork out of the book covers. Really. Yeah, like the bindings. I don't know. Go. You can go. I don't even know where to send it. If I find one, I will. I will message it to you. But okay. um, it's so cool. Like they. I was like, oh my gosh, I never thought of that. I always put them like in alphabetical order, or mm-hmm. like you know by genre, or you know something very boring. But I'm starting to look at the covers a little bit more. <laughs> like, hey, I can make this artwork my bookcase, and that's what people. If are I doing. started doing that, I would probably not get any books written. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably spend my days organizing my bookshelves. <laughs> I know, but I thought, what a great idea because they are, you know, and you, even though you can only see the bind, you know, the binding, uh, the, mm-hmm. but they were making cool like rainbows and you know. Yeah. So, guys, this co- you need this cover in your collection if you're doing that. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a unique, not only cover but the color. The color. Unique. Yeah. The color is what I love. And like I said, you know, with the, it's just, you, after you read it, you even gain more of an appreciation for it because that's what happened with me. So, anyway, but thank you so much, James. I will have all of James's links underneath here. You can find him everywhere, and I'll have the Amazon link on here. And I can't wait to talk to you again because I definitely want to read your next book. Absolutely. I'm, I'll try to get you one. Okay, great. Out. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. If you made it to this video, that means you listened to the entire interview that I had with James and I had so much fun. He is great. Um, I enjoyed talking about his book so much because I love this book. And um, so I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you did, please hit like. And if you'd like to get um, notified of all my videos, please hit subscribe. I'm going to have all of James's links underneath this video. Uh, Go buy the book. That's all I can say about it. And thank you, James. Thank you, everyone.